Hare Krishna, please accept our humble obeisances, all glories to Shaparopan. So welcome to the Ekadashi narration. Today we shall be uh, reading the Papan Kusha Ekadashi from the Brahma Vaivarta Purana. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevayam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevayam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevayam So here we begin the narration of Papan Kusha Mikadashi from the Brahma Vaivarta Purana. Yudhishthira Maharaj said, O Madhusudana, what is the name of the Ekadashi that comes during the light fortnight of the month of Ashvina, September, October? Please be merciful and disclose this truth to me. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, replied, O King, please listen as I explain the glories of this Ekadashi, Papan Kusha Ekadashi, which removes all sins. On this day, one should worship the deity of Panmanabha, <clears throat> the lotus naveled Lord Vishnu, according to the rules and regulations. By so doing, one achieves whatever heavenly pleasures one may want in this world, and at last attains liberation from this world thereafter. Simply by offering one's humble obeisances unto Lord Vishnu, the rider of Garuda, one can achieve the same merit as is, as is gained by performing great penances for a long time, restraining and controlling the senses. Although a person might have committed unlimited and abominable sins, he can still escape hellish punishment just by paying his obeisances to Lord Shri Hari, the taker away of all sin. Okay, so again, Maharaj Yudhishthir, the great king, is inquiring from the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, who was personally present in front of him. So all the Ekadashi story are like this. It is all Maharaj Yudhishthir who is uh, asking from Lord Sri Krishna to narrate. Lord Krishna often uh, um, states the material benefit of following Ekadashi. So this we have already uh, spoken about that why is the Lord doing this we have spoken in many of our uh, Ekadashi story so it is simply an enticement huh? um, just like for example if you want a child to take some beneficial medicine sometimes we give also a little sweet with it or we mix the medicine and something sweet okay so that is um, the way that the Lord uh, slowly brings all conditioned souls to him so here, this is from the Govinda Basya, Basya, which is the Srila Bharadev Vidya Bhushana's commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. So he explains, As for the various fruitive results, such as the attainment of rain, a sun, or residence in the celestial material planets that are offered to the followers of the Karmakanda rituals in the Vedas, these benefits are offered to attract the minds of ordinary men. When ordinary men see that these material benefits are actually attained by performing Vedic rituals, they become attracted to study the Vedas. By studying the Vedas, they become able to discriminate between what is temporary and what is eternal. In this way, they gradually become averse to the temporary things of this world and they come to hanker after Brahman. In this way, it may be understood that all the parts of the Vedas describe the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, there are many different types of men. Some want to enjoy this world, some want to renounce this world, and some are don't want to enjoy nor renounce, but simply use it in the service of the Lord. Uh, some men are atheists even. So Vedic literature is so broad that it is meant to attract everyone, even those who have demonic tendencies. We can see in the stories of bygone ages how the demons even were worshipping demigods so this uh, demigod worship is also learned through the Vedas uh, even demons used to perform sacrifices to Lord Shiva so all this is there in Vedic literature so according to the modes of material nature uh, which are 
constitution one's mind now how one's mind has been programmed in the mode of material nature there is different types of religious system in the vedas there are religious system that are in the mode of ignorance passion goodness mixed you know and there is a uh, shuddha uh, shuddha bhakti uh, so shuddha dharma so which is uh, pure goodness all right so um, lord krishna here has spoken of uh, some benefit to that if you simply bow down to Lord Vishnu, uh, uh, you go to, uh, I mean to say, if, if, on, if on this Ekadashi, Papan Kusha Ekadashi, you worship uh, Padmanabha, which is one of the name of Lord Vishnu, the lotus navel Lord Vishnu, you can enjoy whatever heavenly pleasure in this world, and then you can go to the spiritual world. So, uh, this should not be our goal, this is for uh, others. Again, uh, another small verse concerning this topic. So this is from uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 20, 21st, 23rd verse. Those statements of scripture promising fruitive rewards do not describe the ultimate good for men, but are merely enticements to execute, for executing beneficial religious duties, like promises of candy spoken to induce a child to take beneficial medicine. So you see. So, all right, you take this little sense gratification, but you also do that. And in this way, the, the person will become purified, you know. Because by studying Shastra, just like Shila Bharavidev Vidya Bhushana stated, you start to understand what is temporary and what is eternal. You start to learn that there's something else beyond this material world. So the intelligent person, uh, by having performed pious activity, you, you, you uh, become purified, somewhat purified. And... Uh, you rise slowly to the mode of goodness and in the mode of goodness real knowledge develop krishna says in the bhagavad gita which means that you can discriminate between spiritual and material okay let us continue the merits gained by going on pilgrimage to tirthas of this earthly planet can also be achieved simply by chanting the holy names of lord vishnu whosoever chants these sacred names such as ram vishnu janardana or krishna especially on Ikadashi, never sees Yamaraj's abode. Nor does such a devotee who fasts on Papan Kusha Ikadashi, which is very dear to me, see that abode. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that a little advancement in devotional service protects one from the most dangerous situations. So <clears throat> what is a dangerous situation? What is good? What is bad? Generally, people think of good and bad in terms of pleasure and pain so hell is the epitome of bad um, there are such planets they are not imaginary they are there uh, even uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam I uh, believe it is Maharaj Parikshit who was asking to Shukadev Goswami that where are those planets located in the universe and their exact location has been given so it is not uh, uh, phantasmagorial place uh, or you know like uh, the the kids story sometimes in the West they have all this Cinderella and all of this it's not like this it is a fact this place exists it is as real as a jail in a city you know so people who are very much sinful and who have accumulated so much sin in order to purge all these sins very fast they go to hell Otherwise, they would have to take billions of lifetimes of suffering. But instead of this, they go to hell for a shorter period. And in this way become cleansed and uh, somehow uh, have a chance to come back to their senses. Uh, coming back to one's senses means to understand that we are not independent from Krishna. We are dependent. And therefore, uh, our ex existence should be linked with His existence. Actually, it is already. This is His existence. That is His life. Whatever you see, that is Him. We are simply a little part of that existence. We are part and parcel of His existence. But now we're trying to not be. That is not possible. So, uh, here, it is, Lord Sri Krishna especially mentions that chanting His names is very powerful. And the merits gained by going to an, on pilgrimage to Tirtas can be achieved simply by chanting Hare Krishna. Now one might say, but I, I just need to chant Hare Krishna there. I don't need to merit to, to travel. No, going to, on pilgrimage, going to see uh, holy places is also very much uh, 
powerful, you know, out of the five items that are very beneficial for advancing in spiritual life, living in Mathura or Vrindavan is one of them. Um, and when one chants Hare Krishna in those places, then the power of the Holy Name is even stronger. Uh, uh, because the, the realization that the Holy Name is as pure as the Lord, is not different from the Lord, becomes uh, more prominent in such places. Therefore, our chanting becomes more uh, pure. You know. So, especially in Ikadashi, so therefore it is a sort of a, a, a common practice in ISKCON, uh, in, in Shaprapal's movements, that devotee chant 25 rounds on Ikadashi. Uh, that was not a standard. There's a conversation like this where um, Tamal Krishna Goswami asks Shri Prabhupada that, uh, okay, so should the standard be 25 rounds on Ekadashi and Prabhupada? So, no, he said standard is 16, but on Ekadashi it's better if one chants more. You know? So, we should try to chant as much as we can on Ekadashi because the merit that we gain, uh, spiritual merit, which means on the purification towards developing love of God, is much stronger. Okay. We continue. Both the Vaishnava who criticizes Lord Shiva and the Shaivite who criticizes me certainly go to hell. The merit obtained by performing 100 horse sacrifices and 100 Raja Surya sacrifices is not even equal to 1 16th of the merit a devotee is able to attain by fasting on Ekadashi. There is no higher merit one can achieve than that attained by fasting on Ekadashi. Indeed, nothing in all the three worlds is as pleasing or as able to purify one of accumulated sin as Ekadashi, the day of the lotus navelled Lord Padmanabha. Just see how the Lord is um, emphasizing on fasting on Ekadashi, how purifying it is. Mm. So it really pleases the Lord that we are making this austerity for Him, that we're making this austerity to purge down this conception that we are this material body. When we bring the body to a weakened state, it is easier for us to realize that we are not that body. Mm. Voluntarily weakening the senses, that is Ekadashi. Uh, not that the senses should be extremely strong, uh, that we eat more than required, that we eat so much protein so that all our working senses are extremely powerful, you know. Uh, in this way, we all know what happens when we eat a lot and then we go and sleep a lot, right? And what happens when we sleep a lot? The, the genitals become agitated, okay? So, lust comes in the mind. Mm? Dreams, very, very um, uh, passionate dreams. So, this fasting cuts down everything. But not that one should fast um, on, on days that are not good or, or um, congenial for spiritual advancement and not for spiritual purposes. No, no. Especially Ekadashi is there for that. Especially is there. Uh, reduce the fat within the body. We should not expand uh, materially. We should expand spiritually. Gaining weight is a material expansion, Prabhupada says. Uh, it is expanding in, in matter because the consciousness is spreading more and more. Uh, so, uh, but, and plus, when the whole point is that we should understand that we're not this body. So, if we put so much food within this body, then where's the realization? But this is the purport of 35th and 36th verse of the 28th chapter of the 4th canto of Shriman Bhavatam. So, Shri Prabhupada says, we can definitely see that to advance in Krishna consciousness, one must control his bodily weight. If one becomes too fat, it is to be assumed that he is not advancing spiritually. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakur severely criticized his fat disciples. The idea is that one who intends to advance in Krishna consciousness must not eat very much. Devotees used to go to forests in high hills or mountains on pilgrimages. But such severe austerities are not possible in these days. One should it said, eat only prasad and no more than required. According to the Vaishnava calendar, there are many fasts such as the Kadashi and the appearance and disappearance days of God and his devotees. 
All of these are meant to decrease the fat within the body so that one will not sleep more than desired and will not become inactive and lazy. Overindulgence in food will cause a man to sleep more than required. This human form of life is meant for austerity, and austerity means controlling sex, food intake, etc. In this way, time can be saved for spiritual activity, and one can purify himself both externally and internally. Thus, both body and mind can be cleansed. You see, so if we eat too much, uh, we gain weight, first of all, and we sleep more than required. Because when one eats a lot, he dreams a lot. Uh, and uh, sleeping while dreaming is not very much um, good for recovering one's energy. Okay, and also the the stomach uh, one has to digest while sleeping, so the sleep is not a very high great quality. Whereas one, if one sleeps with an empty stomach, mm, he will not dream much, and he will be able to recover faster. Okay, so by following this method, imagine that one can boil down his sleeping for one hour let's say he needs to sleep one hour less every day by the end of the year this is 365 hours just imagine how much service one can do in 365 hours that is literally 15 days that you gain simply by controlling the tongue and it can be much more than that also some devotees sleep only three four hours in their three and four hours his grace in Nagopa Prabhu or Vrindavan Prabhu in, in, in Malaysia, they sleep very little. So how much are they gaining? How many more days a year do they have than us? Okay, another important point here. Both the Vaishnava who criticizes Lord Shiva and the Shaivite who criticizes me certainly go to hell. Just see. So we have we should never disrespect any demigod. What to speak of Lord Shiva? In fact, in the Nectar of Instruction, Shira Rupa Goswami instructs us that we should offer our respect to the demigod and develop a mood of friendship with the demigod. And Prabhupada showed us how to bow down to the demigods. And it's okay to bow down to the demigod. It's not wrong. We bow down to any devotee who comes in the temple anyway, right? So the demigod, we should, if we see their deity, we should bow down with our right side towards them. So normally we bow down to the spiritual master and the deity on the left side, right? But demigods is the opposite, is the right side. So the idea is that the spiritual master is done on the left, the Lord is on the in front, and you know the demigod is on the right in this way. We should respect every single demigod. And what to speak of Lord Shiva? Lord Shiva is the greatest of all Vaishnav. Mm. Uh, if one disrespect Lord Shiva, there's no way that he can accomplish anything material or spiritual. In fact, this whole incident is there when Maharaj Daksha disobeyed, uh, disrespected Lord Shiva. Uh, his whole material sacrifice was uh, thwarted mm, because he, he did not respect Lord Shiva. So this verse is quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 9, text 32. And it's actually a quotation from the Brihad Vishnu Sahasranam Stotra. Uh, in the Uttarakanda of the Padma Purana, so 72.335. Lord Shiva addressed his wife Durga as Varanana and explained, I chant the holy name of Ram, 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 and thus enjoy this beautiful sound. This holy name of Ramachandra <clears throat> is equal to 1,000 holy names of Lord Vishnu. So just see how a great devotee he is. Mm. And today is actually uh, the celebration uh, when Lord Ramachandra killed the Ravana. So this is a befitting uh, verse. So he's a great devotee and one should never disrespect him. Mm. <clears throat> because he's also the Supreme Personality of Godhead, actually. He's also the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but the difference is that he touches material nature. From a philosophical point of view, we can say like this. If God is all-powerful, can He also not become conditioned, like the conditioned soul? If He cannot, then that means that He is not all-powerful since there's something that He cannot do. But if He becomes conditioned, doesn't that mean that He loses His supreme position? So of course this is mundane logic, but it has some uh, 
roots in truth. So yes, the Lord can become conditioned and no, He cannot. But that conditioning aspect of His is Lord Shiva. Because Lord Shiva must come in contact. Without coming in contact with women, how can the man conceive a child? So similarly, Lord Shiva is the father of all conditioned souls within this material world. And Mother Durga is the mother. So he must come in contact with Durga Devi in order to generate all the offspring. Mm. So this is why the Shalagram, uh, sorry, the Shivalinga is being worshipped. Actually, Shivalinga represents the genitals of Lord Shiva. It represents the uh, impregnation of living entities, uh, conditioned living entities, you know, within this material world. So he is the Lord, and at the same time, he is not the Lord, because he cannot. Uh, carry out the same function as Lord Vishnu. So yogurt is nothing but milk, but you cannot use yogurt to do what you want to do with milk, right? So that is the proper understanding. Okay, let us continue. O King, until a person observes a fast on the day of Lord Padmanabha named Papan Kusha, Ekadashi, he remains sinful, and the reactions of his past sinful activities never leave him like a chaste wife. There is no merit in all the three worlds that can match the merit that one gains by observing a fast on this Ekadashi. Whosoever observes it faithfully never has to see death personified, Lord Yamaraj. One who desires liberation, elevation to the heavens, good health, beautiful women, wealth, and food grains should simply fast on this Papan Kusha Ekadashi. O King, neither the Ganges, Gaya, Kashi, nor Pushkara, nor even the holy site of Kurukshetra can grant as much auspicious merit as this Papan Kusha Ekadashi. Again, Lord Shri Krishna uh, mentions many um, material benefit that one can get. Mm. So there is one similar verse also that uh, is there in the Shrimad Bhagavatam that tries to convince anyone to chant Hare Krishna. Anyone. It doesn't matter out of which desire. Mm. So we shall take a look at this. So this is from Shrimad Bhagavatam, Kanto 2, Chapter 1, Text 11. O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all including those who are free from all material desires those who are desirous of all material enjoyment and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge so you see so even if you want material enjoyment if one wants elevation to the heavenly planet or he wants to merge into the impersonal brahman effulgence or he just wants pure devotional service it doesn't matter one should chant Hare Krishna. And this Ikadashi tomorrow, Papan Kusha Ikadashi, is of the same nature. It should be observed by one and all, no matter of what desire one has. O Maharaj Yudhishthira, protector of the earth, after observing Ikadashi during the daytime, the devotee should remain awake through the night, absorbed in hearing, chanting, and serving the Lord. For by so doing, he easily attains to the supreme abode of Lord Vishnu. Not only that, but ten generations of ancestors on his mother's side, ten generations on his father's side, and ten generations on his wife's side are all liberated by a single observant of a fast on the Sikadashi. Mm. All these ancestors attain their original four-armed transcendental Vaikuntha forms. Wearing yellow garments and beautiful garlands, they ride to the spiritual realm on the back of Garuda, the renowned great enemy of the snakes. This is the benediction my devotee earns simply by observing one Papan Kusha Ekadashi properly. There you have it. You want to be uh, delivering your ancestors. You want to be helping even your wife ancestors to be delivered. Here you have it. You, we fast, complete fast, and remain awake throughout the night and chant Hare Krishna and read uh, about Lord Shri Krishna. That is definitely great austerity for us in the Kali age. Uh, 
this kind of austerity back then was nothing. <laughs> so therefore, this is spoken at the beginning of a of a Kali Yoga when Lord Krishna arrived 5,000 years ago he spoke to Maharaj Yudhishthira so that's especially for us in this Kali age this kind of austerity for us is hard to not eat uh, not drink anything throughout the whole day and then stay awake all night this is quite tough I've never heard a devotee who can do it but if you do it you liberate 10 generations on your mother's side father's side and wife's side we should have faith in this Lord Krishna is speaking here hmm not some uh, uh, man is, uh, you know, has written these things. This is Shravya Sadev. This is Shastra. Mm, we must follow Shastra and have full faith. The more one has faith, the more the effect will take place. O oh, best of kings, whether one is a child, a youth, or in old age, fasting on Papankusha Ekadashi frees him from all sins and makes him immune to suffering a hellish rebirth. Whosoever observes a fast on the Papan Kusha Ekadashi becomes free of all his sins and returns to the spiritual abode of Lord Shihari. Whosoever donates gold, sesame seeds, fertile land, cows, grain, drinking water, an umbrella, or a pair of shoes on this most suspicious of holy days will never have to visit the abode of Yamaraj, who always punishes the sinners. But if a resident of earth fails to perform spiritual deeds, especially the observance of a fast on days such as Ekadashi, his breathing is said to be no better or of as much use as the puffing of the blacksmith's bellows. Okay, here it says even a child, a youth, old age, anybody can fast. Okay, in, a, in a one place, I forgot where, it was, I think it's in the... Um, Hari yeah, Bhakti Vilas, I believe. It is said that from the age of eight years old, a child can start to observe Ekadashi. Eight years old. So uh, he can start with not having any grains, you know, and then slowly he can uh, try to eat less in this way <clears throat> until he's capable of not eating solid food and just water. But the children should become accustomed from the age of eight years old to start Ekadashi. Mm. And initiation, Prabhupada says, 12 years old. So by the age of 12, he's the, the, the child is ready to get initiated if he's capable of chanting 16 rounds. You know. But if he has proper training from 5 onward, there's no doubt that he will be ready. Uh, so here, okay, again, donating. Uh, uh, donating not to anyone, to, to uh, brahmanas, mm, that is the best. Because if you donate a pair of shoes to a drunkard, then he will just walk faster to the <laughs> liquor shop, right? So, all right, then if one doesn't mm, perform spiritual deeds, especially the Sikadashi, his breathing is like the blacksmith's bellows. Uh, and the blacksmiths before to blow wind into the fire there is a, a bellow that you press and it compresses the wind and, and in this way it makes the fire stronger so um, there's a verse also in the Shemad Bharatam that, that is like this so their breathing has got no uh, meaning uh, they're actually dead uh, actually one who doesn't endeavor for his spiritual benefit is considered dead that is uh, according to sages uh, it is said that one has lost the soul. One is dead, basically, because he has lost himself. Mm. Whosoever performs... Mm, sorry. O oh, best of the kings, especially in Papan Kusha Ekadashi, even the poor should first bathe and then give some charity according to their means and perform all the auspicious activities in accordance with their ability. Even the poor, they should do. Give some charity. So what is this charity? Well, he can get some water from the river and he can bring it you know he can fill up a, a pot of water and give it to someone right so some charity should be should be given okay and he should uh, do other auspicious activities our auspicious activities are already given by Shri Prabhupada chanting Hare Krishna so increase the chanting of Hare Krishna of course as one is a preacher and he's engaged in preaching activity it is the same thing but for those who don't preach they should increase their chanting especially and even a preacher, if he's capable to increase his chanting, of course, that is very much uh, beneficial. Whosoever performs sacrifices and benefits the people, 
or builds public ponds, resting places, gardens, or houses, does not suffer the punishments of Yamaraj. Indeed, one should understand that a person must have performed such pious activities as these in the past life if he is long-lived, wealthy, of high birth, or free from all diseases. But the person who observes Papan Kusha Ekadashi goes to the abode of the Supreme Lord. Mm, so, a list of pious activities, public ponds, mm, resting places, okay, gardens, houses. So, these are some of the pious activities mentioned in the, in the Vedas. So, such person does not suffer the punishment of Yamaraj. And uh, we should understand that someone who is long-lived, wealthy, high birth, free from disease, has done some of these pious work in his past life in order to gain the material benefits. Okay. But a person who observes Papan Kushai Kadashi goes to the abode of the Supreme Lord. And that is the goal of the devotee. Hmm. Lord Sri Krishna then concluded, Thus, O saintly Yudhishthira, I have narrated to you the glories of the auspicious Papan Kushai Kadashi. Thus ends the Vrajavasi narration of the glories of the Papankusha Ekadashi or Ashvina Shukla Ekadashi from the Brahma Vaivarta Purana. So, here we have concluded uh, this beautiful narration again by Lord Sri Krishna himself to Maharaj Yudhishthira. Uh, very powerful Ekadashi. We hope that by listening to this, you are getting um, enthused and you are getting some energy, uh, motivation, determination to try to fast on the Ekadashi. I have increased myself, my standard uh, last Ekadashi. I tried to do Nirjal. Uh, I did not um, I have great difficulty to completely fast, but I ate very little uh, and uh, I, I drank very little also. And I could still feel the effect. I chanted 25 rounds and I continued to carry out my service throughout the whole day. So that is um, very much wanted. Even though I did not do a complete fast, I could definitely, definitely feel the result. Uh, the knowledge was even more clear in my mind. I could, uh, you know, understand what I was reading. I could be absorbed more in my chanting, in my reading. So I could definitely see that the material consciousness was boiled down it was uh, you know eradicated and then i compared a few days later when i started to increase my eating again that that left me you know i could feel that yes i, I could have i had a, a better level of spiritual advancement of realization on that ikadashi because of that you know so um, please try your best to do as much as you can on ikadashi if you want to be liberating uh, so many of the ancestors of your father and mother's side and wife's side, then you can do a nirjal fast and stay awake all night. You know, if you can do this, and my obeisances to you. So um, we shall conclude here. We hope that you have uh, appreciated this narration. Hare Krishna, Jai Shri Prabhupada.